Hey guys, I had a comment on one of my videos, the one on the uh, Killer London, where I uh, went through seven games using the London system as white. And um, so I got this, this comment from uh, Claudio saying, you read my mind, I was looking for the London in this video is great. Could you do the same thing for an opening with black? So I thought, well, why not? So I've gone into chess.com and the Explorer, and I decided to have a look through my old games. So you set the change master games to my games, and when I'm playing as black, and I just thought, let's start with a, a D4 opening. So in my games, <coughs> uh, <coughs> then E4 is the most common by at least, well, it's about three times more popular than D4, but we get quite a lot of D4. So um, D5 is has been my most common reply in the past. Um, and then with D6, which is my black lion day. So let's look at D5. A lot of people will face that. And then C4 is the most common reply. So the queen's gambit. So I thought, well, what can you do against the queen's gambit? So what I do is I look at this and I think, okay, where have I had the best results in the past as black? Okay, and this one kind of jumps out. Bishop to f5, the Baltic defense in queen's gambit declined. So I thought, well, let's check that out. And it it's looking like a reverse London system. So I thought, oh, well, let's check out all the games from the current position. So you click on that and you can actually see all your old games that are stored on chess.com, which is really cool. So what I thought I would do is let's have a look at the Baltic defense. So this is, you can pretty much consider this as if you are faced with a Queen's Gambit, you just go into your reverse London normal setup. So here we have, um, I'm going to show you five games, five games that, that I won, uh, all I think in 2018. And... Um, against players rated from 1100 up to 1400 okay so let's just move through these pretty quickly and try and get a feel for this baltic defense so if you're looking for something to um with which to to meet the queen's gambit if, if you are afraid of the queen's gambit you don't quite know what to do this may be an idea for you so the first three four moves are always going to be the same Okay, so we have d4, d5, c4, which is the queen's gambit. Now, queen's gambit accepted would be d takes c4, but most people don't do that. And instead, we're going to bring our bishop out to f5. So it's the queen's bishop comes out, and it comes out on a level with the pawn. And in this, <clears throat> so in this game, my opponent's rated 1115. We have knight comes out, and uh, pawn takes and here queen takes on d5, which is maybe a bit unusual because it's just begging to be kicked away by the knight. And also it would have kind of made sense to capture inwards with the pawn and still compete for the center. But hey, you know, I'm rated 1174 as well. Knight comes out um, attacking the queen and the queen comes out to a5. So a bit like you see sometimes with the Scandinavian. And bishop blocks the pin on the knight. Queen now comes back to b6. Now addressing b2. b2 pushes to b3. And we have knight comes out now to a6. So quite a funky, unusual game, this. And a3 is pushed. And now castles queenside. So putting the rook straight on this semi-open d file. We have e4. Bishop moves across, pinning the other knight. And the other bishop breaks the pin. And now the bishop moves back again. So we've now got two pieces looking at b3. And the knight now comes in with eyes on f7, which would be great. Because it would uh, because black is castled long, it means that the two rooks could now fall to a knight fork. However, that square is covered by this bishop. And even if the bishop was to capture on b3, which it does, it's still covering this square. And that comes with an attack on the queen which white misses, and so does black. <laughs> well, in fact, maybe white doesn't miss it because he's responded with check. So there you go. That's what I didn't see. So this came with check. King has to move, and now the queen moves. Okay. 
And there's a hanging pawn, grab it with a rook. Another check, so these bishops are starting to look pretty deadly here. King moves away into the corner to hide. And we have f6, kicking the knight, knight retreats, attacking the rook, rook moves. And now e5. And uh, white ignores this threat and comes in. Maybe is, is the idea that queen 8 would be a checkmate? Because I don't think it would. Because black has um, knight to b8, which would block it. But the knight comes out to e7 anyway, so we've got now a piece covering there and a piece that can come to there. And the bishop moves. Now we have queen to c7, offering an exchange of queens. White doesn't want to do that, fair enough. Uh, kick the bishop. Pawns coming up. This is uh, quite a wild looking game, and this is a nice little move. Bishop to here, hitting the queen. Queen comes down again, and now we do have an exchange of queens, and now the bishop grabs another pawn. So uh, white's actually three pawns up at this point. Bishop attacks the rook. And now the king's slightly exposed there. Knight comes into the, into the game. Knights pair up. Knight captures bishop. Okay. And we have a, a load of swapping off. So now uh, black is a full minor piece in front and a couple of pawns. And this is just a blunder. Uh, white takes the, uh, the pawn and falls to there and then uh, resigns. Okay, game number two. D4, D5, C4, Queen's Gambit. Decline it with the Baltic defence. Now, I never heard of this before uh, um, Before today, the Baltic defence. And now it's transposed into the Slav defence. There we go. And, uh, okay, so now we have a more familiar kind of um, London setup. But again, we have an exchange of pawns because we've got that C4 pawn. It's uh, very tempting for... Uh, white to exchange off and now we recapture with the C pawn which is the, the move that makes more sense <clears throat> now uh, white pushes e3 bishop pins the knight bishop comes out with check knight blocks takes takes queen comes out not with check so now uh, black's queen comes out to b6 to defend the bishop and white castles bishop comes in attacking the rook rook moves Bishop comes in with a fork on the rook and the knight. So capturing the knight again will uh, break up the pawns in front of the king and expose the king. So again captures towards the centre. So black has a much, much more solid uh, pawn structure now and uh, should do very well here. So pawns material is actually completely equal, but you've got to prefer black's position. Knight captures bishop, queen captures, and now this king is starting to look slightly at risk. Um, bishop comes in to hit the queen, queen's not interested, comes in again, grabs a pawn, comes in again to c3, and grabs another pawn, and now queen captures a pawn, rook captures queen, uh, bishop captures rook, so uh, I think, yeah, so this actually just opens up the, the possibility of uh, rook takes c8, and that would actually be checkmate, but black has time to dodge out of the way, rook comes down, create an escape square, exchange rooks, another rook comes down, but it's too little too late now, and it's going to be checkmate very soon, there we go, that's a nice little checkmate pattern. Okay, so there you go. That was uh, game number two. Let's move on to game three. Okay, now uh, my opponent's rated 1252. So d4, d5, c4, bishop to f5, the Baltic defense. Uh, knight comes out to c3. And we have the uh, c6 push. Knight comes out again. We're back in the Slav. And finished off the pyramid so now a kind of a reverse London structure bishop comes in attacking the queen knight blocks pawn takes on the point of the pyramid and we recapture again with the c pawn 
Knight comes out to uh, partner with the other knight. We have bishops. Bishop moves out to pin the knight. So now again, if this queen moves, then capturing that knight could expose the king. We hit the bishop. Bishop retreats. Hit it again. Bishop retreats again. And now bishop comes out to attack the knight. We have an exchange. Bishop retreats for no good reason that I can see. And uh, white now pushes with a pawn break in the center. Takes, takes. Bishop comes back now. Alongside the queen. Knight takes, knight takes. Bishop pins the knight against the rook. It is defended by the queen. And queen comes in with check. B5 breaks that. And now the king moves. Pawn, uh, sorry, bishop takes pawn. And now a5. Bishop takes bishop. Queen takes bishop. Rook comes in. Queen dodges out of the way. And that isn't with check, but the king moves anyway. Now we have a pawn come up. And that could actually have uh, captured this, this pawn at this point, hitting the queen. But decides to go for the knight move. Bishop takes. Rook takes. So what do we have now? Five pawns. White is actually one pawn in front at this point. We have an exchange of queens. And now, because black has two pawn, sorry, two rooks looking at this pawn on d4, black can capture and is now equal in material. So we've got a, a three on a three against four and a two against one. So this works slightly in um, black's favor, I would say, because black has the king with the uh, pawn majority on the king side, right? So you've got a king with a team of four pawns against a king and a team of three pawns. On the other side of the board, white has the majority, two pawns against one, but no king to help with that uh, campaign. So this is a, an X-ray defense, a neat little tactic when you, when you think of it. So black couldn't defend the pawn, for example, moving the rook there, because the pawn would just take the rook. However, this defends the pawn through its attacker. So white now needs to decide whether to move away or to exchange, and white exchanges. This now gives black a clear pass the pawn, because there are no pawns on the adjacent files. So now it's a question of getting the king up and shepherding that pawn to safety and promotion. So now uh, White's king has opposition, and uh, this isn't actually great for Black. So Black moves, waiting for White's king to slip up. Okay, takes takes. So these pawns are going to end up blocked off. All right, and now I think um, that could be the mistake on White's part. So now Black's king can come in, potentially capturing that pawn. And the white king now can't get next to black's pawn to recapture. So whatever happens now, black takes the pawn, right? White comes back, but it's too late. He's, he's lost the pawn now by moving the king away. Shouldn't have moved the king away. And now what black should be doing is keeping the king at least one square in front of the pawn as much as possible. Okay, so white, white's king now grabs a pawn, but in a foot race to the line, black's pawn should win. So, um, under normal circumstances, you would advance the king and then bring the pawn through. But if this is going to turn out to be a foot race... Okay, so white makes a, an important decision here to uh, keep on black's pawn. So, who's going to get there first? There we go. So, black gets the first queen. Um, I think, yeah, I'm just trying to f figure out the timings of this because it, it looks as though, so pawn, yeah. I think if, um, yeah, if white had just gone pawn there, there, yeah, black would have still got the, the queen even without moving the king up. So there we go. Yeah, so every time white moves his king, black also moves his king. So 
yeah, pretty much game over there. Let's move on to game number four. This is now 12.93 rated opponent. I was rated 12.70 at the time. D4, D5, C4, the Queen's Gambit and the Baltic Defence. Knight comes out and we swap off the C pawns. And now E6. Knight comes out, Knight. Pawn, pawn. Now Queen comes out hitting B7 there. So B6 is pushed. Queen pins the Knight. Knight comes out. Now we have two attackers against that knight, but there are two defenders, the queen and the king. The king can be a defender if it is the last defender. And uh, bishop now pushes. Oh, in fact, the other knight is also defending the knight, so black can castle. Now knight comes in as a third attacker. So now black kicks the bishop, and the bishop kicks off the exchanges. And we have, okay, so uh, black doesn't immediately recapture but instead throws in an in-between move, hitting the white queen. Uh, we have knight takes pawn because the... Ah. I guess black could here have actually captured that knight, um, because if queen takes, you'd have queen takes queen, so that wouldn't work. And here the knight moves away. We have an exchange of queens, so... Uh, we are in a situation where white is one pawn in front. Black now castles. White pushes a pawn. Bishop comes in with check. Knight blocks. Bishop comes in to d3, preventing white from castling kingside. And now kick the bishop. Bishop retreats. Kick the bishop. Bishop comes all the way back to d8. Now the king moves, so white is not castling in this game. Bishop drops back. Bishop comes forward again, hitting the rook. Rook moves. Now we have um, a nice fork by the bishop. So it's attacking the rook. It's also attacking the pawn on h3. But the rook cannot come back to defend the pawn because the bishop is also attacking that square. So the, that pawn falls. And now, I'm not sure this is a great idea actually from white. I think maybe pushing f3 would be better because it would effectively trap that bishop in the corner. Right, and as long as uh, white has one rook on the back rank, that bishop is going to play no further part in the game. So, but this just lets the bishop back out. So we have pawns in a bit of a gridlock. Attacks the rook. Attacks the rook again. Pawn pushes up. A check. This king is now starting to look vulnerable in the crosshairs of these bishops in the middle of the board and a nice check there with the rook so all the pieces are now starting to come into play pawn falls so now um white is sorry black is actually up two pawns and this is a lovely move uh black captures the bishop which is defended by the knight but this move comes with a discovered attack by the bishop so it's a discovered check um, and white must either interpose a piece in between, capture the attacker, or move the king. And the only option here is to move the king. So we've just got a piece for free. And now there's another check with the rook. And now we exchange rooks. And this is going to be a fairly simple ending for black now with the uh, piece advantage and four more pawns. So we just the only way that white can really win this game would be to promote that pawn. But when there's two bishops on the board, it's not going to be hard for black to make sure that that pawn never gets to the other side. And of course the rook, doing a great job, grabs the pawn and defends the bishop. The king moves out of the way. And there I assume my opponent just resigned. It's pretty much unwinnable. Okay, let's go to the final game. And this one is, so I'm rated 1377, my opponent is rated 1410. And we have uh, d4, d5, c4, the queen's gambit, the Baltic. And again, we have the queen captures. So we have an early exchange on d5 and queen captures. Knight there, queen again comes out to a5, pinning the knight. Queen comes back again, hitting the pawn. White attacks the bishop, bishop moves, and we have an exchange of queens now 
on the B file. So White now has doubled and isolated pawns on the B file. Knight comes out, knight comes out, knight comes in. Looking at the at the nice fork here, which uh, White prevents by moving the rook across. Black now castles long. Again, putting this rook straight on the semi-open D file. So we've seen all this before. And b5 now hitting the bishop. So this is quite uh, quite bold play. See, this bishop move actually undefends the d3 square, so I would expect this knight to want to come in with a fork on the two rooks. There you go. Grabs a rook, grabs a knight, grabs another knight with check, and here possibly it would have been smarter for white to have captured with the bishop rather than messing up his pawns. Now white's pawns are all over the place. He's got two on the B file. He's got an isolated pawn on the D file. And he's got three on the F file and one on the H file. So this is a horrible, horrible pawn structure. You notice that black has a... No, it's not hanging. It's defended by the bishop. Okay, my mistake. Black now captures a pawn. Um... Black doesn't want to swap off the bishops because it would allow white to undouble those pawns. So just pushes the pawn instead. Bishop retreats. Now there's a clearly a threat of a discovery. King moves out the way. Rook grabs another pawn. And pawns are just falling a lot now. Okay. There's a discovered check threat. There you go. Discovered check. King has to move. This is looking <laughs> slightly... Uh, nail biting for black. Rook comes in with check again. Hits the knight. Lots of manoeuvring. Attacks the bishop. Um, hmm. Oh, this is actually a fork. So yeah, knight comes in with check. Also forking the bishop. So a decent move. And bishop comes in with check. This is quite a desperate game. Uh, Black finally is able to capture the uh, hanging bishop. Grab a pawn. This is actually a fork. The king is attacking both pieces. Kings don't often get to fork, but they can. And uh, rook moves away, still defending the knight. And now the king moves across, and that is actually the end of the game, because this rook now has nowhere to go. So it will have to give up the defense of the knight. So it can't come here because of the bishop, can't come here because of the king. And uh, so he's going to have to move somewhere on the d-file, in which case the king or the rook will grab the knight and it will be very, very difficult to get into the game. So there you go. That's one way to defend against the queen's gambit. You can decline it with the Baltic defence. And if you are a, uh, a London player then this should be fairly familiar to you. So some differences are uh, a lot of times you, you won't have this pawn on c4 when you're playing the London. It is actually a, um, a very uh, common move that uh, people playing against the London will play, particularly at higher levels. But um, obviously in this Queen's Gambit declined scenario that pawn is always going to be there so you will expect it to be capturing at some point on d5 which is why i think it makes sense to push um the c pawn to c6 as soon as you can it does a few things it also um blocks off this diagonal towards your king which could be exploited by the queen there um in this game obviously we had an immediate capture on there which necessitated the queen to recapture, um, which is also fine and uh, can lead to some quite winnable games. So if you've been looking for a response to the queen's gambit, then this is might, this might be something that you want to consider. Um, like, like always, follow my method of analysing your own games and also maybe try this out against the bots. I've got a I've got a video that shows you how to do that. So um, let's just go through this very quickly while we're here. Okay. So this is the scenario. Okay. You want to go to let's say you want to practice the Baltic against the Queen's Gambit. Okay. So this is what you do. You 
uh, go to, in fact, I think I need to go into the Explorer. So let's pull up the Explorer, first of all, or is it even the PGN editor? Yeah, I think it's the uh, analysis board. Okay, so analysis board, I'm gonna flip the board and let's say white plays d4, d5, and now this is the situation that I want to practice against, okay? So what I would do now is I click finish versus computer and it pulls it up and now, um, okay. So it's got me on the maximum engine and we don't want that, do we? So we're gonna click down here, change bot, and we'll go for a beginner. So let's choose, uh, let's choose Kareem at 850, right? So I can now play against Kareem. And because it's my turn, I get to play the move that I want to play, which is bishop to f5, okay? Now Kareem makes his move. So what you do is you, you can practice this, um, and playing against different bots, you will get different moves played. Okay, so what would I do in this situation? I might just play c6, just to defend this pawn so I can recapture with a c pawn. Right, and I might kick the bishop. Don't have to kick the bishop. Um, yeah, let's kick the bishop, you know? That kind of thing. And, and once you've got to a situation where you think, actually, I've... Um, Oh, it says that was the best move. Yeah, once you've got a situation where you think, actually, at the 850 level, I've pretty much got my my moves down. I know what I'm going to play in response to different things. Then you can literally go back to here. So go back to your opponent has just made their move. And then you can go change bot. And now you can upgrade from him to Emir, for example. And then do choose. And then you just carry on. So just keep what keep working it through, keep making your notes, and use the um, the engine's notes that it gives you. So when I play this, it will prop bishop f5 as a book move, okay? And now the pawn has captured, so what should I do? Right, if I capture with the queen, oh, it's an inaccuracy. Why is it an inaccuracy? So let's move back, okay? How about knight to f6, is that better? Knight to f6 is excellent. Okay, so now in my notes, I would write that if we have that early capture on the third move, then knight to f6 is the move I should play. And you can just practice and drill it over and over and over again until you've got it in your head. And then you'll be able to start playing against human opponents who won't be as prepared for this uh, scenario as you are. So when you pull the Baltic on them, then you'll know what you're doing. They will have to improvise as they go along. So there you go. That's the, uh, the Baltic defense against the Queen's Gambit. Hope it's been useful. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel so that you uh, get notified about all the new content. Other than that, thank you for your attention and I'll see you soon.